It's always awkward to start my comedy show, so I just say hello. Hello. I'll say hello to the audience, but I won't ask you how you're doing. It's not that I don't care. I just recently had a bad experience. I was doing a show recently, and I got on stage, and I was like, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? And I was like, yeah, yeah, woo. But somebody in the front, real audible, was like, not good. <laughs> And I didn't know what to do, because I'm a comedian, but I'm also a nice person. <laughs> so I'm like, what's wrong, sir, what's wrong? He's like, oh, I just got a text. I just got, I found out my grandpa passed away. That's what he said out loud at the comedy show. <laughs> and I was like, well. You really shouldn't be on your phone at a show, sir. It's kind of a rule. <laughs> I had a weird experience yesterday. Uh, listen to this. I found out that one of my childhood classmates passed away. I got the information via Facebook. And for the last two days, I've kind of felt like I had something to do with it. Let me explain. <laughs> His name was Philip, and when I was in the first grade, I had a birthday party. And after they got done singing happy birthday to me, because it was my birthday, Philip, he blew my candles. <laughs> yeah, it was my birthday. It was devastating. It was the worst day of my life up to that point. I was crying, and my mom, she was trying to console me. She's like, it's okay. We'll just do it again. We'll just start over. So my mom lit the candles. I made my wish. I blew them out, and I found out yesterday it came true. It just took a little bit of time. You guys laugh, but I'm kind of freaking out. I keep thinking detectives are going to show up to my door. Did you have a Ninja Turtle-themed birthday party in the first... I am 38 years old and I've never broken a bone. Never, never. Like at what point in my life do I start to question, hey, maybe there's something more to this. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe I too am an Avenger. I don't know. <laughs> so I confronted my parents recently. I'm like, mom, dad, what's going on? What's going on? And they set me down. They were like, we knew this day would come. Sit down, sit down. As it turns out, you are just incredibly lazy. <laughs> It's hard to break a bone when you're constantly resting. <laughs> I played a lot of sports when I was younger. You name it, I did it. Basketball, football, soccer, hockey, tennis, golf, track and field. I did karate, I boxed, I fished, I hunted, I did it all, people. And then my Nintendo broke. <laughs> I played Little League Baseball, and I don't know how it works around here, but back where I'm from, teams are named after who sponsors you, right? So we play against teams like Pizza Hut, Pepsi, right? But this is true. My team, I played for Rungi Mortuary and Crematorium. <laughs> yeah, nobody smiled in our team photo. Our uniforms were little black suits, little neckties. This is my ready position out in the field. Kind of weird when the coach would tell us to look alive out there. <laughs> I loved animals growing up, so this was exciting. One summer, uh, a raccoon got into my backyard. I was like, yay, Ranger Rick's here, yay. <laughs> but here's something you may not know about raccoons. If you see one during the day, you're supposed to stay away because they're nocturnal animals, right? As opposed to night raccoons, you could just hug those. But day raccoons, <laughs> stay away from them. Yeah, I didn't know this, but my dad knew this, so he went inside and got the gun and shot it in the head. Yeah, 19 times, because all we had was one of those BB guns. And then when that didn't work, he began to beat it with the butt of the gun. Finally, he comes over to me, he wipes some tears and some raccoon blood out of my face. He's like, son, son, it's not right to let something suffer. That was a very confusing lesson. <laughs> Later on that summer, a squirrel got in my backyard and it wasn't feeling good. It had like a cold, <laughs> like a summer cold. It was like, ah, choo! <laughs> and I was like, run! <laughs> Get out of here, my dad's nuts! <laughs> and that made him 
to stay. I'm like, no, he's not literally not. <laughs> My dad came in the backyard somewhere suffering. <laughs> Makes you dizzy. <laughs> I was a good kid. I never got in trouble. I was a goody goody. But I think even the goody goodies, we tasted what it was like to be bad and we didn't like it. Here's what happened to me I had a crush on a girl, and this was before texting, so what you would do is you'd write him a note, right? So I wrote this girl a note, and all it said was, Hey, sweetie. That's all it said. Plenty more of that came from. Just lay the foundation. And I'll never forget this, she opened the note and she instantly started crying, like, oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> then she ran out of the room. I'm like, oh, you know that feeling where you did something wrong but you're not sure what you did? <laughs> sure enough, I get called down to the principal's office. He shuts the door. He's like, Chris, why'd you call Colleen sweaty? <laughs> What do you do? I can't let this guy know I can't spell. I'm a sophomore in high school. <laughs> so I have no choice. I'm like, well, <laughs> Colleen sweats a lot. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Two weeks detention, but no special ed. <laughs> Funny side note of that story, that girl, we ended up getting married, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but wouldn't it be a great way to end that joke? I don't know where she is. Hopefully, staying hydrated. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, get in shape. I went for a jog recently, and I was feeling good about myself, and then a group of teenagers, they drove by me, and they rolled down the window, and they are like, Hey, you're fat! But then they immediately stopped at a red light. So I actually like jogged up next to them. I was like, I know. That's, that's why I'm jogging. And they were like, keep up the good work. It was like a weird exchange. I'm like, are we friends? They gave me a ride home. My little brother, he's a big lifter. He's like, if you want to lose weight, you gotta lift. You gotta lift, you burn more calories. <laughs> so I recently went to the gym and I did the squat. You know what the squat is? It's where you put the bar on your back and you use everything. Everything, sir. You get the hand bones cooking. It's a total, you go lower than this. I didn't stretch, but you go low. You get parallel, you go low, yeah. And I squatted and I racked and I felt pretty good about myself. And then somebody came right next to me. They put the same amount of weight that I have using my hand, hand bones and everything, right? And then they proceeded to just lift it <laughs> with, their, with their arms. I'm like, really? You can't wait till I'm done? You can't scoot over? There's five other racks. I just thought it was really rude of her that she'd come right next to me. It's not a competition. It's not, it's not the Olympics. So last year, uh, I was a high school teacher. Well, last week. Well, this week, I'm still a high school teacher. Um, but the show's going pretty well. I might, put my, I might put my two weeks in. I don't know. Uh, I'm not that good of a teacher. <laughs> Teach high school, have a couple of pet peeves. One thing I hate is high school kids. Uh, the PDA. You guys know what that is? The public display of affection? Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> Students holding hands, making out in the hallways. I'll have boyfriends drop their girlfriends off to my class. And it's like the most dramatic scene ever. It's like a scene from Last of the Mohicans. Like, I will find you! No matter how long! No matter how far! I will find you! You stay alive! Stay alive. And then he jumps through a waterfall. Like, I had a girlfriend in high school. We didn't do that PDA stuff. We didn't have to establish our love. We were very distant. She didn't have to know my name. There was even four years where I learned to date another guy. That's how distant we were. <laughs> I love being, 
Love traveling. This never fails. Every time I go out of town, I always just go to a subway. That's where I go. I could go anywhere, but I go to a subway. I have one impression for you guys. I don't do a lot of impressions. This is my impression of somebody who works at Subway when you ask for a little mayonnaise. <laughs> Someone that works at Subway when you ask for a little mayonnaise. <laughs> You're gonna get mayonnaise, people. I figured out how to get a little mayonnaise at Subway. You asked for no mayonnaise. You're still gonna get a little squirt. Like, I don't want any mayonnaise on my sandwich, please. You're still gonna try to squeak it in there. I swear, I was on a Subway a couple weeks ago. I ordered my sandwich, I'm like, look, buddy, I don't want any mayonnaise. I don't like the mayonnaise. It was a young kid working the counter, so he's like, I reach around and sneeze. No. And I swear to you, he turned around to a camera behind him. sandwich spelled in the mayonnaise it said help me something's going on <laughs> they put a letter I was at the mall back home a, a while ago and I saw this store I got to tell you about this it's called Build-A-Bear you guys ever heard of this basically the concept is simple I just explained the kids build the bear they make it they make it. They learn valuable lessons like how to cut out the middleman. I don't know, but kids love this store. So this actually gave me an idea for a company. Uh, this is the end of a joke. I just want to do my pitch and see if maybe you're interested. I'm going to use this opportunity, okay? I'm going to get a store in the mall, and I'm going to call it. You ready? You ready, sir? Sir, come on. Jump on this steamrolling train. What am I saying? Uh, I'm going to call it Catch and dress a squirrel. <laughs> Hold on, hear my pitch. In this squirrel, I got like, in this store, I got like 30 or 40 wild squirrels just running around. <laughs> what you do, you, you bring your kid to pay a small fee, and I give you like a bucket and a stick. <laughs> and you go get one, get them in the bucket. You can have fun, throw the bucket, I'm not looking. Bond with your kid. For crap. That's phase one. Get them in the bucket. Fair warning though, they hate. Buckets. Phase one, phase two, is you bring them up to me at the counter and listen to this. I got a bunch of outfits, little squirrel outfits. I got like astronaut squirrel, baseball playing squirrel, French maid squirrel for the fellas. I don't know, I got it all. Now here's the part where I lose investors. Squirrels, they just don't willingly like, mm -hmm, like put on a jean jacket, right? So I gotta find a way to calm them down and relax them. Don't worry, the kids don't see this. I take them in back and you know, <clears throat> I punch it in the face, I knock it out. And then they're much easier to get dressed. And then I bring them out to him, like here you go. Here's, here's Elvis Presley squirrel. <laughs> nailed it <laughs> but for legal reasons I do have to issue the fallen warning eventually this hunk of burning love he will wake up and if you thought he was mad before <laughs> when he was in the bucket you wait till he wakes up and he's got sideburns glued to his face it's gonna be big so I'll tell you about this uh, I'm married I'm a, I'm a married man. Uh, we've been married for 10 years. She's my best friend. I love her. But sometimes I, I mess up and do stupid things. Like I remember once my wife suggested, she's like, we should get tattoos on her ring finger. You guys ever heard of that? We should get tattoos on her ring finger. 
And uh, I don't have any tattoos, and I don't want a tattoo, but I probably should have came up with a better response than, uh, that's a little permanent, don't you think? <laughs> I know. I know I was there. You can't grab words. It's air. I can't. No. I know. I'm currently in the doghouse because the stove is broken. And my wife's like, you need to fix this stove. You need to fix this stove. I don't know why I'm suddenly qualified to fix a stove. Like I was a theater major in college. All I know is how to be the stove. I'm preheating. Some of you guys are like, I want to fry some eggs. I'm not a real stove, it's acting. I wasn't a real stove. What? I wasn't. I was just acting. Like, how'd they get a stove up here? It was acting. Hey, my wife, listen to this. My wife finally spent uh, her Victoria's Secret gift card that I got her for her birthday. Look out. Ooh. She bought a hooded sweatshirt. Well played, Emily. We have kids. We have kids. I'm sure we got some parents in the crowd. I think uh, you never want to see your kids get... You never want to see your kids get hurt, right? You just want to protect them. That's a natural instinct. So we had a bit of a scare. This happened a while ago, but uh, my daughter twisted her knee on the trampoline and she was screaming. So I took her to the emergency room. Uh, she was fine, but it was so cute. The nurse came out and asked her if she was allergic to anything. I'm like, no, she's not. But my seven-year-old daughter, Ruby, tugged me on the sleeve and was like, dad, dad, I'm allergic to guinea pigs. <laughs> I just thought it was cute. <laughs> but here's what's weird. The nurse wrote it down. Like, I'm not a doctor, and I don't know how medicine works, but I like to envision there was another nurse, like, on her way out with, like, two... <laughs> two, like, pet carriers. Like, oh, she is allergic? Okay, I'll just take it. <laughs> She did say she was allergic. What did she say? She did say she, she did say she was allergic. Okay, she did. She did, what did, she did say she was allergic. Okay. I'll just take Dr. Whiskers and Dr. Butterscotch back. Yeah. <laughs> this is a funny visual, right? And it's also, can you imagine, has anybody ever had a surgery where they had to be like put under for a little? It's scary. But I can't imagine a scenario well, you're in the surgery room, and the anesthesiologist is like, count backwards from 100, you're like, 100, 99, 98. And a guinea pig <laughs> walks into the room. Your first reaction is like, oh, because they're cute, right? But then when you've noticed... <laughs> when you notice he's scrubbed in, that's got to be a nightmare. No! That's the worst! It's awful. <laughs> Have twin boys too. Twin boys, yeah. 11 years old. Over the summer, um, one of my boys, Jonas, came in and he was bleeding out of his head. I'm like, what is going on? So I took both my boys, went to the emergency room. Jonas got some stitches in his head. And I'm like, what is going on? That's when I found out that my boys created a new game called Rock Tag. <laughs> Do I need to go over the rules? You know. <laughs> I'm like, guys, we can't do this. Look at, look at Jonas. Thomas, say something to your brother. Look what you did. Say something to your brother. I'll never forget this. He's like, you're it? I'm like, no! <laughs> kind of funny, but not right now. <laughs> kind of funny, but not right now. <clears throat> not right now. I get along with my wife, she's my best friend, but you know who doesn't like me? Her dad. Uh, he's a big hunter, I'm not. Uh, but for some reason, the first time I ever met him, I told him that I was. Like, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> sure enough, uh, later that week, we're hunting. 
Long story short, he shoots a deer. He has to run back to his truck and get something. He tells me to go ahead and start to dress it. It's a weird. So he comes back, the deer's got my jacket on. Gloves on its hooves. He's not amused, I'm just confused. He starts to really dress. It turns out I was way off. <laughs> Finally, after about 20 minutes, I'm like, hey, Mr. Atkins, maybe we should take my clothes off the deer. It's getting weird. <laughs> I figured that'd be a bad time to ask if I could marry his daughter, too. Not, not good timing. Anyway. I'm like the first one of my friends to have kids. So now uh, they're kind of catching up and they want to talk about it. Um, my buddy just called me out in California. He just had a baby. And... Uh, I was just curious, because uh, when my wife was pregnant, we played music when, in the tummy. Have you ever heard of this? Like lullabies, we would do that. So I asked my buddy, do you ever do that? He's like, oh yeah, we did that. Nothing but classic rock and roll, classic rock. <laughs> I'm like, did you notice anything when your baby was born? He's like, oh yeah. First time my son ever cried, he was like, If you don't get that joke, Google Led Zeppelin. They're a promising young band. They've got a lot of potential. <laughs> I love to perform, and I think it stems from an early age. For instance, when I was in the first grade, we had show and tell every Tuesday, and that was a chance for me to kind of get up in front of the class, right, and show off. But here's the thing, you guys. I grew up poor, so I never really had anything good to show off. Like, I remember one Tuesday, I'm like, hello, everybody, my name's Chris. Here are some acorns. There's seven of them. One doesn't have a hat on. Yeah. yeah, and right there, that's the same reaction I got in the classroom. Did you feel that? And we had a kid in my class, we'll just call him Kevin Barnes, and uh, <laughs> he had a geode rock. You ever seen one of those things? Oh, they're beautiful, they're mystical. And he would bring that stupid rock every Tuesday. Like I was being original, right? I found my stuff in the backyard. He bought his at a gift shop, so he was cheating. His parents bought it for him. Like I remember one Tuesday, I brought a snakeskin. Are you listening? I brought a snakeskin. I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, we all know what snakes are. But did you know they wore coats? <laughs> they don't have arms. <laughs> and it got quiet in the class again. And somebody in the back was like, is Kevin gonna bring that rock? I'm like, shut up, Philip. why won't you die? <laughs> And it got so bad that one Tuesday, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done, I can't compete with Kevin. So I didn't bring anything. But I remember the teacher was going around the room like, no, Chris, you'd love to perform. You'd love to perform. And here's what I came up with, ma'am. I tore a piece of paper and I started to fold it, right? Because I was gonna do one of those origami cranes. And as I'm folding it, that's when I realized, those are hard. If you've never done an origami crane, I don't know, I just suddenly thought I could master origami. So I'm like, oh no. She's getting close, I'm like, oh, Finally, she calls on me, I'm like, hey, everybody. It's Chris, snakeskin guy from last Tuesday. His piece of paper. Piece of paper. <laughs> but here's the thing, you guys. Everybody went nuts. They were clapping for me. It was the best day of my life. I don't know why, but I was loving it. And then as I walk back to my desk, I see Kevin. You could be Kevin. And then it hit me, I figured it out. I got real close to Kevin and I'm like, paper beats rock. <laughs> Thank you guys.